Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're gonna to be talking about the state of flow in language learning, which is something I've wanted to talk about for quite a long time now. But for some reason, I felt like I needed a good amount of reflection before being able to sort of formulate my thoughts on it. But recently I have been experiencing an awful lot of flow with Spanish. And it's the first time in a long time that I have been experiencing flow with language learning. So I think that anybody who has had this experience, this video should resonate quite deeply, I think. But even more importantly, anybody who hasn't yet had the opportunity and frankly, the luxury of experiencing the flow state in language learning, I hope that this sort of inspires you to keep pushing through until you get there. Because I love it so much that I really hope and wish that every language learner could experience flow in that language they're learning. And so without further ado, let's jump in. And by the way, this video is sponsored by DataCamp which I'm awfully excited about. So DataCamp is an online learning platform that makes it easy to build data analytical skills at your own pace with interactive courses. I've been learning data science myself for the last year or so, and every time I mention it, lots of you say that you're also interested in building data skills. So I like DataCamp because there's no previous skill required to get started, but my favorite thing is the sort of skill and career tracks that they have, which basically curate an entire curriculum of courses you can take to achieve a certain goal, like becoming a data analyst, for example. The really cool thing is that the first chapter of every single course is completely free, and then subscriptions begin at around $25 per month, and there's no credit card needed to sign up. It's also nice because there's no special software that you need, you can do everything inside the browser, and so I just recently went through their entire Introduction to Python course, and I thought it was really well done. So I would just say, if you're interested in this stuff, and I know that many of you are, invest in yourself. Please use my link in the description and take a look at the first chapter of any course for free, and a big thanks to DataCamp for sponsoring this video. Happy Wednesday, let's jump in. <sighs> okay, so just in case some of you are not familiar with this idea, this concept of flow, it's a concept that was introduced by a Hungarian psychologist by the name of Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. And the idea behind flow is it's, it's sort of synonymous with this idea of being in the zone, right? And there are so many different ways that people often describe this sort of heightened state of focus but it's where that heightened state of focus intersects perfectly with an equally heightened sense of happiness, I think. That's sort of my personal spin or interpretation. And what I wanna focus on in this video is a particular requirement of flow, as sort of defined by Csikszentmihalyi. Now, there are three sort of requirements that I typically see talked about. The first one is that you should be engaged in an activity with clear goals and also that involves some kind of progress. The second requirement, which is quite important here, is that the task must have clear and immediate feedback. But the third and I think potentially most important aspect of achieving a state of flow is that there must be a good balance between the perceived challenge level and the perceived skill level of an individual, okay? So if we take an example I always like, which is basically drawing a picture, right? So in my mind, I can imagine quite well drawing a beautiful, you know, amazing picture, right? A portrait of somebody. And that's a really excellent goal but my skill level, it is not compatible with that particular task, right? Because the thing that I produce, it is way too far apart from what I imagine, right, as the end result. And so I cannot achieve flow when it comes to sketching, at least sketching something like that. Even when I sketch something simple, I always have this feeling of being sort of inadequate, right? Or being out of my depth or not really knowing what I'm doing. What we can essentially reduce this down to is that there is a level of mastery 
that I think is required for this level of flow. Now, let's tie this all into language learning because this is what I thought I needed to reflect on for a while because I've definitely experienced this with learning languages, but not always. And why is that? Well, I almost think that there is a sort of happiness paradox when it comes to learning languages. And I think that polyglots and aspiring polyglots and just anyone who now is learning different languages are very susceptible to this, I think. And I think that the, the online language learning community is driving this more and more. And that's why I'm constantly shouting from the rooftops, at least doing my best to shout the reality and encouraging people to do things like take breaks and engage in play with language learning and to take languages to high levels and seeing them through. The paradox, in my opinion, it's that we essentially want to be happy, right? We, we're learning these languages in a lot of cases to bring us some sort of happiness. Now, of course, some people have a very specific thing they want to achieve. Maybe they have a job or something. But even so, I think that lots of people who watch this channel, we're learning languages because it makes us happy. And we believe that learning the language will bring us more happiness through one form or another, through traveling to the country, having real life experiences with native speakers or through reading books or listening to podcasts or watching movies or doing projects, anything. Well, the funny thing is when you first start learning a language, there is a short sort of romance period where you actually get this really good feeling because progress is quick. Progress is noticeable. But the thing is that that actually is fairly short lived, right? Then we enter this pretty long climb up a very tall mountain of learning a language where, you know, we feel pretty inadequate, right? Where you're trying to speak and express yourself, but you don't have the sufficient skills to quite accomplish that goal. You're trying to listen to a podcast, to music, to a radio show, you're watching a movie. Anything that we try to do that involves the sort of end goal experience, we have this sort of inadequate level of skill and so it's a struggle. Now, I still think this is enjoyable, but what I really wanna drive home in this video is that that initial really good feeling, that romance period when we start a language, it's very short lived. Now, on the other hand, when you achieve some level of mastery in a language, now I don't necessarily mean, you know, complete mastery. You don't have to be native like. It's when you start to get to the point where I think I am with my Spanish. And that's what's been really interesting these last few weeks, this last month, as I've been getting back into Spanish. You know, when you can actually listen to a authentic native podcast and just enjoy it and just understand it. And you know, and you're hearing words that you don't know, but you have such a good level of comprehension, a good grasp of the language, you know so many sort of synonyms and cognates and things that you can guess and it doesn't matter. Like that is astoundingly satisfying. And the thing about that is that is not short lived. That is something that lasts. In my experience, it never gets old, you know, turning on a new piece of content and being able to enjoy it. You know, the other day with my lunch, I was watching uh, an episode of a documentary called the Taco Chronicles, learning all about El Taco al Pastor. I didn't know that this was so quintessentially Chilango, you know, like something for people from Mexico City and it was such a special thing for them. It was amazing just enjoying this thing, just watching it in Spanish. And this goes on and on and on. So I guess my point here is that I think the interesting thing is that language learning is perfectly compatible with experience this sort of flow state because if we look at the three requirements you have a specific goal at a given time so let's say i'm listening to a podcast recently i've been enjoying listening to entiende tu mente right so it's like understand your mind it's a podcast with like three psychologists and it's really interesting so there's a clear goal i want to enjoy and understand the episode of the podcast. The second requirement is very particular as well. There is immediate and clear feedback, right? 
if I listen to this thing and I'm not getting it, I'm not understanding, there's immediate feedback, right? I, like, I either don't understand it or I do. And so when it's going well and I'm understanding, there's this constant flow of feedback, positive feedback, that like, yes, I got that. Yes, I get that, right? Combined with actually learning something new and actually experiencing, you know, interesting thought invoking ideas in the language directly, it's incredible. But most importantly, it's that I have a perceived goal. Now it's not easy, right? I still have to have a level of focus, right? To still enjoy what I'm doing. So there's still a challenge involved, but my level of skill in Spanish is sufficient to where I can follow along, right? And so it has all the requirements and I've just been experiencing these long walks up and down the hills of, you know, Oakland over here. And like, it is, a, it, I just, I can't describe it. It's so deeply satisfying and I love it. And the interesting thing about this sort of happiness paradox that I mentioned, and I think I'll do a separate video all about that. It's that it takes a while to get to that level of mastery where you can start experiencing flow when learning a language. And so what I think a lot of people do is they switch and they start learning another language, right? Because we kind of get a little bit addicted to that immediate satisfaction of being a beginner and making progress really quickly, hand over fist, right? And then we take it to different points, right? Maybe you get into that intermediate stage where you, you hit that famous intermediate plateau, which I have a whole video about rethinking what that really means, but people talk about it, you know, and people get to where you have these, this wide array of languages, all at different levels, but maybe none of them ever quite reaching that flow state level that we a lot of us want. And so to get that satisfaction, we keep going to a new language. We're a beginner again, it feels great. And then after a certain point, we seek that satisfaction again. But like I say, it's kind of unsustainable after a certain point, unless you're, that's your goal. I'm not saying this is completely bad. I'm just saying that I want to point out that, you know, to me, the true solid gold, you know, like the, ah, the essence of the intrinsic value for me behind learning a language, right? When I start doing things that are just valuable in themselves, right? Taking a walk and listening to a Spanish podcast, there doesn't have to be any other reason for doing that than simply enjoying the moment. And that comes after a while, but it's so incredibly valuable. And so, like I said, I think anyone who has experienced that, I assume, or I hope that you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I would love to get your thoughts. But again, most importantly, if you haven't had that feeling yet, just keep going. I urge you, keep going. Even if you're studying, you know, different languages, it's totally cool. But I, I would just like to plant that seed. Really try and take one of them to where you experience this wonderful sensation of heightened focus and happiness that can really just go on and on. You know, and I think it, I just think it really, it gives a different perspective on the journey of learning languages forever after and any other languages that you choose to learn. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. I think that it's a really cool topic and I would love to talk about it more in the future. But for now, I will leave you and I will see you again very soon for another exciting video.